Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here. And it's been a solid second since I've been the Lord Eye, and I figured it was high time to make my return to the content that I originally fell in love with regarding Vigor. So today's video will be about the War of the New Map, Myron, this battlefield of the swamps where we, the Outlanders, play shootout now. It's a rather cool map, so with no more delay, let's get right into this. <laughs> So first up, let's quickly review how we can tell the lore of a map without a single note or anything giving us hints. Prop placement. By analyzing where things are placed and in what regard they interact with each other, we can understand the story the devs are trying to paint with those things and thus the map as a whole. Sometimes there is no story. However, in the case of Vigor's map design, every map has a little story it is trying to tell. And all of these stories give us a rare insight into the war that the game doesn't really tell us directly about. So what does Myron tell us? For the moment, we don't have all of Myron, rather a tiny part. This sliver of a map can only tell us a bit about the greater sliver of story that exists within. Thus, gathering info from it can only tell us part of what's going on here, and that part might really not be indicative of the whole. An example of this prior in Vigor's War would be Bridges. If on Bridges we only saw the north side of the map, we'd think the map is a Soviet occupation map. Yet in the south side, it tells the entire story, which is quite different. But let's at least try our best to understand the hand that is dealt before us. Myron has a lot of tanks, and is clearly a battlefield. One wouldn't have to be a theorist or any kind of deeper thinker to understand both of those facts. With 26 tanks, which by the way is a bit over two companies, worth in a small 200 meter area, in craters quite literally everywhere, a bloodbath most certainly occurred here. But much more than this can be understood if we delve deeper. Heading over to the craters in the north, we can also see machine gun emplacements. Whoever last used these is long gone, but the level of military buildup remains constant. And continuing with this trend, we can swing to the south side of the map where a large cannon is rendered silent. This old beast, a clear indicator of the scale of the battle that once occurred here. So this is a massive battlefield. It's not no side flank combat like we saw in Bridges or Kirsten, Rather, this is a front-line battle. And finally, the last thing we've got to note here is a signature Red Star and CCP on that gas station. This battlefield was held in occupied Soviet lands. So by combining all these aspects and plopping them onto a map, we can begin to understand what is actually going on here. To preface, it's been long theorized that the war started in Finnmark due to Soviets invading it. Then they pushed through it and then got stuck in Tromso where the rest of the maps take place. This map could be one of those early war battles, the Soviet line pushing through the purposefully underdefended Finnmark region and rapidly taking it due to the supply and number advantages. Following their rapid conquest using armor, they established a base, which over time they got shelled by NATO planes, thus the need for the AA cannon that we see. This is honestly what likely happened, and everything that's shown here plays testament to that. But there is a slight issue. Why is there so much dead armor here? Quick thing, we see maps in their final states, so whatever armor we see here or whatever things we see here is the state they were most likely at in the point at which the noobs fell. Because of this, the 26 pieces of armor creates a couple of problems. One, how did so much armor get destroyed here? Two, if so much armor got destroyed here, why wasn't it recovered? These two questions create a bit of an issue, because on the map we see no signs of NATO armor, or really units of any organized kind. Considering the whole war plan of NATO was for Finnmark not to have any heavy buildup, that is no surprise. But the piles of dead Soviet tanks certainly means something must have killed it, and if it was killed in the original battle, why weren't these tanks recovered for use later in the war? or for supplies when the depot was built, or just scrap. On the other hand, if it died from the newt, which is a possibility, why are there so many? In this point of the war, it should still be far behind NATO's front lines of Bridges and Grantheim. And, even if it wasn't, this is kind of just a random field. For there to be this many tanks that are kind of combing to all die here is just a little strange. For me, I just think we don't have enough of the picture, or perhaps I'm not seeing the proper way to really look at this yet, so we may have to wait until Myron's full map drops. For now though, we got a battle, and a shootout map, 
which hopefully y'all have been having fun on. So that's all from me today. Till next time, this has been Christopher Beast. Ciao. Thank you.